All right, wizards, we're going to do the same problem again, but this time from a hypothesis test point of view or a hypothesis test approach. So um, when we check conditions, we've already checked the randomization con condition that the 2016 adults were, adults were randomly sampled. And um, certainly uh, that sample is not too big. Um, 2016 adults is certainly less than 10% of all adults. Um, when we check the big enough condition, we want to use the population proportion that we're assuming to be true. In this case, the population proportion we are assuming to be true is 0.25. So based upon a population proportion of 0.25, how many tattooed adults would I expect to see in a sample of size 20, 000, or 2016? Turns out, I would expect to see 504 adults with one or more tattoos and 1,512 adults without. Both of those are greater than 10, so my big enough sample is, is uh, met. Uh, the sample is large enough to continue on and use a normal model. My null hypothesis states that the population proportion is equal to 0.25, or in words, 25% adults have tattoos. My alternate hypothesis is that this population proportion is actually less than 0.25, which means that less than 25% of adults have tattoos. So what model am I going to use? So I'm going to use this normal model. This normal model is based on the null proportion or the population proportion, which I'm assuming to be true. Sometimes that's written with a p sub 0. But um, we've seen this model a number of times before. My mean is 0.25, and my standard error is a 0 0.01, or a little bit, a few more decimal places, 0 0.0096. Since my um, alternate hypothesis is, is a population proportion less than 0.25, that is a lower tailed test, because I'm looking in the lower tail, I'm looking less than something, and that's a lower tailed test. So my p-value. Here's my model of my normal distribution. There's the model I'm using. Here's my sample proportion, p hat. So I want to know how likely is it that my sample has a, a proportion of 0.21 or less. So I'm looking less than that. And using my normal CDF, uh, that turns out to be 0 0.000015. So that is a very small p-value. So my decision, um, since my p-value of 0.000015 is less than my alpha level of 5%, I reject the null hypothesis. I have evidence to suggest that the population proportion of adults with tattoos is less than 25%. Now, does that mean they are less than 25%? No, but I have pretty strong evidence, so that's going to be my conclusion, that maybe I just got one of those weird samples that was... Uh, unusually small, but I don't know it. So I made some sort of an error, perhaps, and we'll talk more about errors later this week. So describe what the p-value means in context. Remember, the p-value is a conditional probability. So the probability that a p-hat would be less than or equal to 0.21, given that the true proportion, the null proportion, is equal to 0.25. So given the null hypothesis is true, in other words, 25% of adults have tattoos, how likely is it to see a p hat equal to or less than 0.21? And can I conclude that percentage of adults who have a tattoo is less than 25%? Yes, I can conclude that. My p value is very small, smaller than my alpha level, so I rejected my null hypothesis. I'm going to conclude that it was less than 25%. I could have made an error. I could have made a mistake. This could be a type 1 error, but we'll talk more about errors later this week. So that is a hypothesis test approach. I hope this video has been helpful, and ask questions about it when I, when I see you tomorrow on Thursday.